Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Hi guys, this is Steve from One Minute Tennis. Today I'd like to talk to you about the serve of Roger Federer. I'd like to talk about how he changed it from being a very good serve into a truly great serve. Also what he did to make those changes and how you can make the same changes to turn your serve or your student's serve into an incredible and effective weapon. Federer won Wimbledon for the first time in 2003. In 2004, he had a real challenge. He played Roddick in the final, and he won something like 4-6, 7-6, 7-5, 6-4. Um, in that match, he had 17 break points against him. He saved 15 of them, but he was pretty lucky. He was under real pressure for the whole match. The following year, Federer played Roddick again and Roddick thought he was ready. And Federer won something like 6-3, 7-6, 6-4, -6 he had zero set, uh, break points against his serve. He won 73% of his second serve points and served two second serve aces. And his serve was slightly slower. From then on in his whole career, Roger Federer's serve was the biggest weapon in his game. But it wasn't before that, it was just very good. So what was the difference? Because it wasn't speed, it was slightly slower in that second Wimbledon final. Between the two finals, Roger began working extensively with Tony Roach, and what they did between them was sheer genius. We're familiar with talking about what a genius Federer is, but this was sheer genius from his coach as well. The first thing they did was they practiced serving blindfolded. They practiced serving so they could serve without watching the ball. This is difficult to do, but if you're willing to miss sometimes and hit sometimes, then you can achieve it. The second part of the transformation is that Federer would begin the ball toss and after releasing the ball, Roach would call out where he had to serve to, wide, body, tee, etc. And so now he's making the decision of direction at the last possible moment. The third stage of the transformation was that Roach would now add spin to the instruction after the ball was released. So Federer releases the ball and then Roach calls out wide kick. Or Federer releases the ball and Roach calls out a body slice. And so now he starts to be able to hit the different spins off and the different locations off the same toss. This becomes impossible to read. And then there's the last part, because when Federer releases the ball, because he, can, he doesn't need to watch the ball in the same way as everybody else, because he laid the foundation of being able to serve with his eyes closed, then Federer begins the serve and keeps his eyes on his opponent until right onto the release point of the ball. Almost every player in the world either looks up to the ball early or follows the ball in its path up from the waist height up to uh, contact. But Federer looks at the opponent till the last possible moment. In that second Wimbledon final, the moment that Roddick took a step to the left to try and engage his forehand on Federer's kick serve, then Federer would change the decision and hit a wide slice. Roddick was bewildered. You see, many times you hear about receivers like they can read the mind of the server as they read the movements and anticipate it. But Federer is doing something totally different. He's reading the mind of the receiver because the moment the receiver moves to a you know, direction to get around the backhand to be aggressive, Federer sees it and responds to it. He's able to see it because he's looking longer than anybody else. He's able to respond to it because he can direct the serve and choose the spin after he's released the ball. So this took Roger Federer's serve from very good to truly great. Now it isn't easy, but I believe that many times people, uh, they overestimate what can be achieved in a short space of time, but they also underestimate what can be achieved in a long space of time. So begin the same process. First of all, practice trying to hit the serve with your eyes closed or blindfolded. It doesn't matter if you miss. First, try and go through the service action and catch the ball and then hit it if that's a better process for you. Then have a partner, practice partner, friend, whoever, call out where you're to serve after you've released the ball. Then add the spin, put the three parts together and you'll find that you can watch the opponent just a fraction longer than everybody else and adjust to where they move. You don't have to have the hardest serve in the world to have the best serve in the world. 
I hope this makes sense. As ever, please let us know what your thoughts are on this idea, how it works for you and your players. We love your feedback and we always reply to every comment. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel, please. And remember, if you need more help with your game, we do one-to-one -one individual lessons online. It's a truly unique service. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work. Where's he going, Boris? Out wide or up the tee? Wide. It would have been an ace against me as well. There you go. <laughs> Juice. <laughs> Back to Juice. Where's he going, Andrew? Wide. Cool. Advantage Federer. So, Tim, where's he going now? Clearly out wide. This for the hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Federer. <laughs>